Hey guys, welcome back to Kumasa Reviews. What we have here is the Hot Toys War Machine Mark IV. This is from his appearance in Avengers Infinity War. Outside of the Hot Toys Iron Man Diecast Mark VII, this is definitely my most anticipated Hot Toy of the year. I guess it really doesn't count as much for me as some veteran collectors saying that because this is my first year of collecting 1-6, but I've gotten quite a few in that time, but yeah uses the Mark III as a base, basically gives it steroids, arms it up to the max, camo, deco, different lights and stuff like that. There are quite a few aesthetic differences in it, but there's a lot of Mark III that shines through. So let's take a look at the height. And I made sure none of the hip extensions or anything like that were going on. So this is about 12 and a half inches tall, big heavy piece. So this is the Movie Masterpiece Series 499 D26. This version is a Sideshow exclusive. What makes it exclusive? It's these two pieces right here. You see it comes with a stand, but it also comes with a cover that goes over the stand. You just literally put it over the base. And then from there, I should probably tighten my camera here. And then from there, clip back in the stand. In fact, we'll just do it now, knock it out, take that out really tight. So you just put it over, kind of use this to guide it, boom, then it comes with this decorative alien piece there. Yeah, so those are the exclusive parts that sheet of paper and the alien bust. So, trying to get that damn stand apart, kind of knocked everything around here. We're gonna go ahead and get it organized, but while we're getting it organized, we'll talk about it, save some time. So, this is, of course, the unmasked head. Go ahead, put the mask on. Goes in by magnets right here and right here. This opens, and then you can place the mask right there as well. This part, the back blaster kind of parts forms. We'll go over that when we go over the weapons. These are the exposed missile pods. Four, two of his, uh, I don't know what to call them, his missile blasters, I guess. These two pieces, as well as these two, they're just like the Mark III. They're different forearm covers, top and bottom, to have weapons exposed. These two pieces, like the Mark III, go inside of the shoulders, they're missiles. Two fist with blasters exposed, exposed. We've got two open hands, repulsor blaster hands, and then just two hands with articulated fingers. Pretty cool stuff. One more look at everything and we'll get some other hot toy comparisons and stuff like that going. Oh, and before I get going, one thing to note about this review, and this is just for my own sake, you see this cover piece here? On the back side of them, it's all covered up here, but there is a switch under there, and this panel is really hard to get to with everything kind of covering it up. So for the sake of this review, since you can't see it anyway, I'm just leaving it off. Okay, and again, we've discussed 12 and a half inches tall, plenty of die casts, both inner and outer. Nice, cool digital camo, deco throughout, good stuff. Now, the articulation points are going to be the same as the Mark III, which it uses the same base or frame as, whatever. All right, so ball jointed head. It has the ability, there's a slider that moves it up and down, and then there's another ball joint here, not a lot of movement where the neck meets the clavicle, but some. So plenty of up, down movement, 360 side to side, really can't ask for more. These shoulder covers, they do have the ability to move some. The shoulders do butterfly outwards, inwards, like normal is the farthest back, so you can't do any back. I wish that the whole thing just pulled out, so you could choose front or back and just have that added articulation, but it's nice for what it is. All right, so you can see, above parallel with the outward swing, 360 bicep movement, All right. 360 shoulder rotation, 
looking at the elbow. You do have double jointed elbow, but it does pull out. Again, there. Look at the silver. Pulling it out. Boom. I'm just making sure it's focused for you guys. Wrist, ball joints, so you have some rock. Of course, you have swivel as well. So the waist, just kick the camera, so I apologize. The swivel is going to be up here in the upper part of the chest. Pretty good there. Pretty good. And then, you've got some back and forth movement too. Now this piece that just fell off, mine, not on this side, the other side a little bit more. But it goes right here, it's a slider piece. That just slides up and down, we'll go over that when we go over the gimmicks. Back to the waist, ab crunch. Now for our extended movement, it extends up, you see quite a bit. Now this ab portion here, even collapses in to help with lots of ab crunch there and lots of back bend as well. All right, Still, the articulation when it comes to swivel is in that upper part here. Now when it comes to the skirts, these side pieces do move out of the way as well as these front pieces a bit. So, one, two, and then just making sure nothing's blocking it, which it is. And that's one of those panel covers there. So, all right. So that's about the extent of it. Now these do, the hips do drop, and we're just going without the drop first. So that's his frontward, that's his backwards. Now, two levels, we're moving it all the way down. There's a middle level though too. So we could see quite a bit more movement, quite a bit more back. But the back, nothing in the butt moves really. So you have to kinda go around instead of straight back when it comes to that. All right, double jointed knees. And you can see that piece came off again. It holds on pretty well with friction. So I don't know if I'm not pressing it down far enough, but that's what it is. Boom. Ankle tilt. Decent amount inwards, not as much outwards. This piece does move. And there are some movements in pieces like this, as well as this. And there's some movement here, as well. So looking at the foot itself, boom, and then forward and back. All right. Get that back up so it stands straight. Fall. And that's the articulation. And now we're going to go ahead and go over the lights and the gimmicks. He's a really simplistic piece, so head just pops off, switch right up here. That part, just like the Mark III. Alright, so I knocked that cover off. That's how it looks by default. Take these covers off, they're just held on, pegs, friction, nothing too crazy. It's easy to see which side is what because of how these are shaped. So, boom. Now when they first started marketing this toy, I thought that there was like going to be covers or something like that that flipped over, but these are fine too. I just hate that occasionally they pop off. These pieces just flip out. Right. And you have these missile pods. And then, all right. So now we got this. I'm gonna zoom in here and see if I can't. All right, so you're gonna see in here little peg holes, rectangular. Now the Mark III, I believe, these pieces were there, but they were just magnets. We're on the Mark IV, they actually peg in, so improvement. And it's a good friction. You can get them in and out without having to use like a spudger or anything like that. In fact, the only panel that you have to use a spudger for is that one on the back that I don't even have right now. 
and we're going to uncover that in a second. So we've got missiles, we've got more missiles, we've got one light on. So, just so you know where we're at. Oh, and I should have said on the shoulders, they can go up and down a little bit too. So these flight parts here go in and out, or around I guess. And then these pieces, the ones that like to fall off, slide. Make sure to push down while you're sliding it so they don't just pop off. Slide. And then, this is where the switch is. So it's hard to see in the dark. I'm gonna zoom in and see if it looks any better. Yeah, there we go. It's right there. And the panel kind of goes like around and under. So that's why, boom, I just turn that on. All right, but while we're back here, before we even look at that nice pretty light in front, this pops out. And then from there, whoops, I should probably zoom out. Then it just plugs right into this piece, which then plugs into his back. Now, you can keep it like that if you just want to back mount it, or this all rotates. like so, then slide this piece up, okay, alright, so we're definitely not done yet, that's not how it's going to look, and then this piece right here, there we go, and you can also rotate it to the side some if you want. So that side mounts, I think it looks a lot better. Side mounted. Zoom it out. I'll actually get him back some so we can see all of it. But yeah, it's a bit excessive, I'm not gonna lie. But it's a good look. I'm just moving this gun so you can see it. A little bit better and also forearm panels come off and there are switches on each side those are the repulsor blast ones two and see I just fell for it and there are also panels underneath the forearm on the inside and again not even using a sputter they hold on great, but they come out super simple as well. All right. And these aren't side specific, I don't believe. Go on, pegging those on the inside. Get in the other forearm panels pegged in as well. Just two pegs. And two. And since we've got those lights on, I'm gonna go ahead and get the repulsor blast hands on. Whew! That was in my face and just watch it, guys. That <sighs> that took me by surprise. Oh jeez. Even passing by it now. Those LEDs are very, very, very bright. They're like an LED flashlight, so. All right, so let's get some poses going with them. We're gonna use that extension there. We got the pose there. Make sure everything's angled right. I feel like he should be looking a little bit more down. 
And let's take a look at how this looks without lights on too. So you can see how bright they are. If you were wondering why all those detoffs turned off at once, they're remote controlled. So that's a pretty cool tidbit about this room. So pretty bright stuff. Get those on. And as always, I apologize that turning the lights on and off are is pretty jarring. And use this right hand. Just popped it right out of the ball joint there. What do you guys think of that? Hang it a little, little bit more. He's actually balancing on the front of his foot there. So let's see if we can make that happen. There we go. I can dig it. And there's that. All right, and here we are, all of the war machines. These are the Hot Toys diecast iterations of them. On the left, you're gonna see War Machine Mark I. Right next to him, War Machine Mark II. And of course, War Machine Mark IV. And next to him, War Machine Mark III. So pretty cool stuff. And you can see a lot of the War Machine Mark III in the War Machine Mark IV. It doesn't show as much since he's all, you know, I guess gunned out and stuff like that. But definitely when you have them side by side, you'll see pictures on the gallery, on kumasawa.com, comparing them both and things like that. There's quite a bit, and it's a beautiful thing, you know. They're definitely my two favorite hot toys right now. So, yeah, just wanted to get that comparison out of the way as well. All right, let's go ahead and end this on a very boom, there it is type pose. Honestly, this thing is spectacular. You know, I come in with a heavy bias, like I said at the beginning, because I love the Mark III so much. This takes my favorite hot toy, gives it a bunch of PEDs, and goddamn, it's Alistair Overeem at its best right there. That's the level of PED we're talking. So that's UFC, MMA stuff, or whatever. Google them. But anyway, it's an incredible piece. If you like die-cast figures, if you like War Machine, if you like just really cool looking toys, mecha, things like that, I think even outside of like Marvel fans, people would really, really, really love this one. Worth every bit of the 420 430 or something like that that it costs whatever I'm really glad to have this piece it looks feels and plays spectacularly and like the mark 3 so many things about this thing are so simple and that's some of the fun about it because you have these panels and stuff like that you saw that I was just taking them off with my fingers didn't have to use spudger or anything crazy like that not too invasive even when it came to the small parts like these missiles right here everything just goes and like goes in and out, gets taken off, put on very, very, very easily. It's an extremely articulated figure as well. I mean, this one just has it all. You like War Machine or you don't. You like this suit or you don't. But as a toy, there's no denying that this thing is nothing less than spectacular. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends or whatever, and make sure you check out the written breakdown as well as the gallery on kumastyle.com. Link will be in the description. Thank you guys again so much for your support, and see you next time.